Hello everyone. It is Tucker here from Tucker Sewing and Quilting. Today is March, what's that say? The 11th, nine o'clock Eastern Standard Time. And today we are going to be working on this beautiful, beautiful Bargello behind us. So um, if you're following along, Donna over at Handmade by Ying is doing a series on the Bargello quilt. And she has asked me to do a live stream featuring the cutting of the strips. So that's what we're going to be doing tonight. How fun. So let me see who's in the chat. We have Delia in here. Hey, Delia. Hey, Tucker and everyone. And we have the queen herself, Donna over at Handmade by Ying is here. Uh, she says, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Bargello Live. Thank you for coming. And if you have any questions, just ask. Absolutely. Um, if you do have any questions, just tag me or Donna and we will get those questions answered. Um, if you have questions after the live or things like that, always feel free to reach out to Donna or myself and we will graciously answer you. Wow. We will graciously answer those questions and help you with whatever you need. We have Melody in here. We have Donna Dixon. Hey all. Hello. We have Brenda D. Adams. Hey, hey. We have the Debt Free Quilter. That's Heather. We have Susan Harbor. We have Jamie Tony in here. Good evening, young man. Hello to you as well. We have Mary G. Hello, everyone. That is beautiful. Yes. Um, let me grab the fabric. It's just right over here on my long arm fabric line that I used the fabric line that I used was this here these are the uh, Hoffman let me focus this in right there the Hoffman Batiks uh, Sandcastle Bolly Pop I had these jelly roll strips available in my website but you know um, uh, with the Bargello, you do use a lot of jelly rolls. So these are no longer available on my website because I used them all. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, it has a great variation of browns into greens into like the tanny blue color and then back to there. But I'm trying to figure out which camera to, or which button to push. Um. Uh, when you're sewing jelly roll strips together, they finish at two inch. And that pack of fabric had two, had 40 strips. So 40 times two is 80. And that wasn't long enough. And I wanted to put this on a queen size bed. So I followed Ron Carlton's instructions and I added a couple extra strips of fabric to each jelly roll to give me the length that I was looking for. So now my, um, my tubes measure uh, 40 by a hundred. So yeah. So also if you are interested in doing this Bargello in the description below is the link for the pattern. Um, Ron Carlton, the designer of the pattern also has a video on YouTube showing you step-by-step -step how to make the Bargello. Um, so definitely check that out as well. We have Quilty Tube. Hello from Wisconsin. I subscribed yesterday and I'm very impressed. Well, thank you very much and thanks for subscribing and stopping by. So, also, speaking of subscriptions, my me and Donna's dear friend Teresa Louise over at Teresa Louise I Quilt Too is so close to hitting her 3,000 subscriber goal. So, tonight on my live and then on Donna's live later, which I'll tell you about in a minute, we're really going to be pumping up the volume for Teresa's channel. And we're going to be doing a lot of special giveaways over at Donna's in an hour. So if you haven't subscribed to Teresa Louise, I quilt too. She has amazing content. She does her Sunday zooms, which is just a laid back, relaxed, awesome chat. And she's doing unboxings and long arm quilting and it's absolutely fabulous. So I'm sure Donna will drop the link for that in a minute. But um, in the description of this video also is the link to Teresa's channel. So definitely go check her out and 
push her over that 3,000. So I know that Donna will be doing a giveaway tonight if she hits over 3,000. And Teresa will be doing a giveaway. And I'm pretty sure she'll be giving away one of her quilts that she made. So it would be awesome for you to win one of those. Also, uh, Donna over at Handmade by Ying will be going live in one hour at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time for an all-nighter sewing chat. So you can grab your beverage of choice and get ready to sew all night and have a lot of fun. So I will be heading over there after this live and I hope you all come over and stay up as late as you can and get as much done as you can. So we will do that. And Teresa Louise is in the chat and she says, hello everyone. And then she said later, thank you. You're so welcome, Teresa. So we have that. All right, let's see. We have Lynn Quilts. Hello, I am new to your channel. Well, thank you very much and welcome. So there is um, some fun people in the chat. The people that you see in blue are some of my moderator friends and they too have channels of their own and they can drop the link. And if you have any questions, tag either me or you can ask them. Guess who Nancy? Hey, Donna, Teresa, Susan, and Tucker. So with all of that being said, uh, we're just going to jump right into this and get started. So let me figure out what I'm doing here. Make the camera angle a little bit bigger. So you can see here, wonderful Bargello. Um, the Bargello is an amazing quilt. It's more of an optical illusion than it is. Oh, I'm like, things are creaking over here. Uh, the Bargello is more of an optical illusion than it is a headache to put together. So please, please, please don't be intimidated to work this project. It's very, very, very simple. Uh, so Donna has showed you how to prep your fabric, sew your tube together. And now in this video, I'm going to show you how to cut the different sizes to get this wave effect. And then I will show, um, word sucker. I got, I squirrel, Donna said something in the chat. And then I will show the different ver variations of how you can lay your quilt out. So what we're gonna need for today's program, let me focus this again. Look at that. So for today's program, you're going to need a rotary cutter. And when you're cutting this strip tube, which Donna has showed you how to put together, you're going to, when you fold your strip tube up to cut it, you're going to be cutting through about eight layers of fabric. So what I would recommend is putting a new blade in your rotary cutter. Also, what you're going to need is to go along with your rotary cutter, you're going to need a a ruler of some sort. I like to use this five by 20 ruler. It just makes sure that whatever I'm cutting will fall within this 20 inches. And it's a nice long ruler. Also, you're gonna need here a seam ripper to pick apart your, your strip tube. So, let me get this strip tube. So this is my strip tube. Now, what is a strip tube? A strip tube is when you have sewn all of your jelly roll strips together on the, the 40 side. So all of your strips are sewn together and it makes a big, long uh, length. What you're gonna do is you're gonna sew the bottom of your strip tube to the top of your strip tube, right sides together. And that's what's gonna create the tube. So once you have all that sewn, what you're going to do is start to fold this up. So you can see here, this right here, I folded it in half. And then I'm going to fold it again. So now there's four layers of fabric on top of it, each other. Straighten this out. And then I'm going to bring this back up. So right here, from this point down, there is eight layers of fabric on top of itself. So trying to remember what else oh also let me zoom this in a little bit because I really want you to see 
you see here how this is my first fold and then my second fold is not directly on top of this first fold. If I was to bring this first fold on top, these seam allowances would land right on top of each other and that would add more bulk to your cutting experience. So if you just offset, offset it a little bit, then everything will lay flatter and you won't have as many bulky seams to cut through. Uh, let's see. We have Lynn saying, so wish I could be here for everyone. 2, p 2 p.m. here in the UK. Uh, that's why I watch the replays and need some sleep. Well, good night, Lynn, and you can always catch the replay and thank you for stopping in. So, once you've folded this up, Depending on how you sewed your strips together, your, your wonky edges from your jelly roll strips will be on either one side or the other. So let's just pretend that this is the, the opposite side over here, and it'll be easier for me to show with this angle. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look through my pile. Let me zoom this in just a wee bit yet. There we go wrong way look at that so what I'm gonna do is just sort of flip through this pile and I'm gonna find the jelly roll strip that is the shortest so flipping through this it looks like this jelly roll strip way down here I don't even know if you can see it hang on move this out the way yep right here this jelly roll strip down here is tucked under here so we want to square everything up in line with this one so that if we cut out here our strip will not be cut short so what i'm going to do is line everything up put my ruler on here and your rulers have markings on them obviously so what i like to do is i like to line up my straight line with the bottom of this ruler and i like to line up in a couple different points to make sure that my strip strip sets stay straight because we don't want our strip sets going like this so now once i have my ruler in place i'm going to hold it like this and i'm just going to flip through again and make sure that i'm catching that fabric that is the smallest and i can go come over just a little bit more right there and that's where I feel comfortable lining things up. It's better to cut more off than you think because you don't want to get to the end of your strip, cut that last strip, and find out that you can't use it anyway. So you might as well just hack a little bit off ahead of time just to be safe. So now what I'm going to do with this fresh blade is just zip down the side and trim this up. Get rid of those. Now what I'm gonna do is just flip back through here on the, along this edge just to make sure. And I want you to see right here, right here, that I missed this one. So this one is a little bit shorter. So if we were to leave this in when we were using our, when we're using our half of, or a quarter of an inch seam allowance, this seam right here would not get caught in your quilt. So I need to come back through, reline this up, and trim this off again. Get rid of this. I'm gonna flip back through and everything is caught now. So it is very important that you take that precautionary step. So now we are ready to get started. So in the pattern directions that Ron Carlton gives you, there are there is the cutting directions so what you're going to do is you're going to start at three inches once you cut that three inches you're going to subtract a half of an inch which is two and three quarters of an inch and you'll make your next cut you will keep subtracting that half of it that quarter of an inch i'm going to get that so mixed up tonight you're going to keep subtracting that quarter of an inch until you get down excuse me to one inch when you get to that one inch, you're gonna switch directions with your cutting 
and you're going to start increasing that half of an inch. So it will go from one inch to one and one fourth to one and one half, one and three fourths, two inches, back up to three, and then you'll start going down. So let me switch again. Zoom you out here so you can see what I'm doing. Perfect. So I'm over here, I'm starting on this edge and I have already been cutting. So I said that I cut my three inch strip. Hang on, let me see, can I get it zoomed in over there? Let me move this just a wee bit. There we go. Because I really want you to see what I'm doing here. There we go. All right, so I have already cut my three inch strip. So now I'm decreasing as I go along. So now what I'm gonna do is measure two and three fourths. I had to get it straight. I had to get it straight. So I've already cut my three inch strip. Now I'm decreasing that half. See, there we go again. I'm decreasing that fourth of an inch down to two and three fourths. So I'm gonna make a cut. So now I have a pile over here, and as I cut this off, I'm putting this on my pile right next in line. So I'm keeping all of these cuts in order as I go. So I just made that cut, and that was one and, or two and three quarters. Now I'm decreasing another quarter of an inch, and three and three quarters minus a fourth is two and a half. I said three, but I meant two. So I have my two and a half measured here, and I'm just gonna cut this next strip. Once I cut it, move the ruler out of the way, put the strip in line with the pile. So I'm just gonna keep doing this, subtracting that quarter of an inch every time. So that was two and a quarter. My next strip is going to be two inches. And Teresa Louise says, I believe they are all 2.5 inch strips. Yes, the, the, this right here, where the strips go across, this is your two and a half inch unfinished, two inch finish that you get from sewing your jelly roll strips together. Okay, measure that, that was two inches so now I have one and three quarters one and three quarters one and three quarters one and a half and these get pretty small what did I just say? See, I forgot already. One and a quarter I need to cut. One and a quarter. And then my next strip is going to be over here, one inch. All right. So I just cut the one inch strip. I'm going to move this to the side. So you can see here, I have just a wee tiny bit left. So now what I'm gonna do is continue cutting my strips and until I can't cut anymore. So now I need to cut one and a quarter. And then one and a half. And look at that, there's just a wee little bit that's hanging off the side. So this is gonna go in the garbage. So we are going to, you're going to do this starting, take one of your strip tubes, take one of your strip tubes and start at three inches and work your way down to one, work your way back up to three and then work your way back down. You're going to cut as many strips as possible like that out of your first strip tube. So you could see right there that I ran out of room. 
So what I would recommend doing is after you've cut the last strip you can out of your first tube, measure this so it's one and a half. Take a piece of paper and write on here that your last strip was, and then the measurement. This could be, it could be different for you and it could be different for someone else. So write down your measurement. My last strip was one and a half. Squiggle that and then write first strip needs to be, wait, I can't even spell two, one quarter inch more if you're increasing, because here I was going from a fourth or one and one fourth to one and a half. So my next strip would be one and three quarters. But if it ends up that you're decreasing when you run out of room, just subtract that fourth of an inch. So the first strip on the next strip tube needs to be one and three quarters. And this will keep you in line because it's easier to write it down than it is to try to remember it and then you end up forgetting. And um, hang on. Uh, it's easier to write it down and remember than have to go back and remeasure. So that's my little tip. So let me bring over all of my things that I have cut, which is a lot. Bringing all these over here. And then's when we're gonna do the magic of picking it apart. Now wait a minute. Oh. So I'm just gonna lay these on top of each other. All right, so as you can see, I have already started the process of picking these apart. Now, the, the process thereof picking these apart is what's going to give you this wave effect. So I want you to, when you cut your first strip and once you get all your strips cut, on your first strip, you need to determine where you want your main focus to start. So you can see right here that this strip of blue is my main focus. And if you've been watching Donna, you know that to me, her yellow strip that she has in her quilt or her green or blue, that's her main fabric that you see prominently. So you need to first figure out where in your quilt you want that fabric to be placed. So once you have your strip cut, and we're gonna pretend that this is the three inch strip. We're gonna go like this. Now you can see here that your fabric, it's in this, it's still sewn in this tube. So what we have to do is come to our design wall or our floor or whatever we have and we're gonna figure out where we want this fabric to land. So I'm just gonna line this up with where I already have it. And you're just gonna pick a point. So we're at whatever fabric you want at the top of your quilt, you're gonna mark it. So I've marked the fabric that I want to be the top. So I want this polka dotted fabric right here to be the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this right sides together again. You can see it there. And what I'm gonna do is find this seam ripper and I'm gonna pick these stitches out. That's gonna open your tube up and then you're gonna take the fabric that's on the top that you want on the top and you're gonna pin it to where, or put it up to your design surface. So you can see I did that with the first strip. So now, with the second strip, you're gonna do something a little different. 
So let me move all this out of the way so I can show you. All right. Where's the top? Right here. All right. So I said that. There we go. So this fabric here is the top. And if you want your color to start moving up on your next strip, you're going to take your next strip, get the tube, open the tube up so you can play with it. And what I like to do is I like to find either the top fabric or a fabric that I know what I'm looking at. So I look at this fabric right here because it stands out. So now what I'm going to do to start is I'm gonna line these two fabrics up like they were with my strip tube. So if you want your focus fabric to go up, what you're gonna do is you're going to move your fabric up one. You see there, so now this fold fabric, I'll call it, moved up one. So now what you're gonna do is, because this is the top, we've already unpicked this, we're going to Hold our finger there, fold those seams right sides together, and we're going to pick this seam out. Ready? Look at that. We picked it out. So now this, you can see this fabric jumped. So now I'm going to take the next strip in line. I'm going to, once again, find this focus fabric. I've lined it up in line and I'm going to bump it up if I want my design to go up. Now you can have your your focus fabric hang on I'm caught on all this stuff you can have your focus fabric go up 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 the whole entire way that is absolutely fine but there is ways that you can add different effects to this so I continue doing this effect keep all of my strips going up until I got to my smallest fabric, which was the one inch. The one inch fabric creates the deepest part of your wave. And the one inch strip is the place where you switch directions if you're going to. So once I got to my one inch strip, what I did, hang on. What I did was we're going to pretend that this is the one inch strip. What I did instead of going up was I went down. Okay. I went down one and you can see here that now this fabric is in the same place as this fabric and that's okay. But remember this strip is a different size than this strip. So if you want to have your strips going up or down or all different directions, that is completely up to you. I recommend to everyone to play around with the position of your strips. The This is what makes Bargello so interesting and so unique. So, um, okay, I'm just skimming through the... All right, so this is what makes everything so unique. So it is completely up to you whether you take all your strips up, whether you take them all down, or you vary them like I'm doing. This is the magic of the Bargello. Everyone's Bargello is gonna turn out so different and it's so amazing. So, now I'm going to put these strips in the correct order for mine. So what I'm doing is I'm doing the design wall method. So my strips currently are going down. So right here you can see there is a pretty bold difference between this uh, brown fabric here and this white. So what I'm doing is I'm taking this brown fabric down one because that's how I'm working my pattern and I'm just lining up all of this extra to till I get to the top. So once I get to the top I'm going to mark which strip is the top And I'm going to pick this seam out. Just pick it out. Pull it apart. Pull the thread out of there. And then when I come over, when I come back over here, 
lining everything up like that. Just like that. So this is the part that is very, very, very important that you keep straight in your head. So I recommend that you do this one at a time and make sure that everything is lining up correctly because it is very easy to jump around. If you're, if you're sort of working ahead of yourself, you could have this happen where instead of just jumping once, your colors actually jump twice. You see that? So there's the colors jump twice and the colors jumped once. So work your strips one at a time when you're cutting them apart or you're ripping them apart. And it's okay because if you do end up making, you know, some type of a mistake, you can always sew your tube back together, right sides together and redo your picking. Okay, that one, like this. Pick these apart, like that. All righty, let me have a look, see, in the comments, uh, let's see, yes, subscribe to Teresa Louise. Donna has popped the link for Teresa Louise in the chat a little while ago. Uh, let's see. Uh, so sorry, late to the party. Tucker Sewing Quilting. Love the fabrics. Do you know the name of it? Yes. These fabrics are uh, Hoffman Sandcastle Bali Pop. And this is uh, Hoffman Fabrics. There we go. Beautiful line of fabrics in here. And these were available on my website, but I used them all. <laughs> so let me go on here and check something out a second. Uh, do, 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 do. Let me have a look, see. Come on. Um, where'd that go? Hang on. Oh, here they are. Okay. I had to do that. All right. Uh, we have, why are we going to be all, wait. Quill Tessa says, why are we going to be all nighters tonight? Just for fun, you know. Because who doesn't love an all night So We're going to be bringing in the time change, okay? We're going to be bringing in the time change, having a, a blast. Hey, and if we... If we stay up when the time changes, we get to say we sewed for an extra hour. So that's always great. Uh, let's see. Oh, that's right. Uh, Mary says, I would have to mark my strip size two so I don't get them messed up. Yes, they make, what I would recommend doing is taking, if, if you do get a little confused, uh, even though you're putting them in order, I would take like those mini sticky notes and write on, write the sizes of each strip on there and then just pin that to each strip. Uh, let's see. Uh, looking good, Tucker. That's from Janine. Donna dropped the link. Uh, Tucker. Uh, but how many colors do you think, do you think you need as a minimum? Okay. Donna's. I'm trying to remember. So this quilt over here, each color is different. So I added some extra jelly roll strips to give me the length that I wanted. But, uh, but Donna's quilt, we were talking about this earlier. Donna picked the jelly roll that she did because her jelly roll had duplicates of each fabric in it. It had like three or four jelly roll strips of the same. So I would say that, what's 40 divided by? I would say a minimum of, of at least 12 different fabrics with three jelly roll strips for each fabric. That's gonna give you really bold, uh, really bold waves in that, and that would look aw awesome. Um, but I know that Amy, and she's reminding me in the chat and talking about it, 
Amy, Amy C, who's in the chat, she did an, uh, she is doing a version of the Bargello quilt with just two colors, white and black. So I would definitely recommend just playing around with it and, you know, having some fun with it. Uh, time change is evil. <laughs> they need to leave it alone. Yeah. Well, hey, maybe. Yes, yeah, spring forward tonight. Uh, let's see, when you choose a jelly roll, uh, do you choose a contrast with a dominant color? That is a great uh, question. And I'm trying to remember where my Bargello that I did went. Hang on, I'll be right back. Because it should be laying over here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. All right. So, as some of you may remember, and there's been a lot of new people since I have done this, but this is a Bargello that I did with um, Robert Call, no, K Facet Fabrics. And this was two jelly rolls. And this was a rainbow jelly roll. So, you can see here that there really isn't a prominent color. It's just the, the way you lay out your, your blocks that makes the effect. So I would say just pick a jelly roll that you love the colors with and it will turn out awesome. But this is the Bargello that I did. So yeah. Hang on, let me flop it over here. Flop. All right, let's see. Time for some coffee. Coffee time. And did y'all see my coffee cup? Wait a minute. Handbook for the recently deceased. And this is Beetlejuice from, yeah, Beetlejuice the movie. So that's my coffee cup of choice for tonight. So yeah. So I'm just going to pick some of these strips apart and pop in the chat if you have any questions. And this is just, I am loving the Bargello. The Bargello uh, is one of my favorite things to do. Uh, it's just the, the magic of, you know, how the wave looks and how different everyone's quilt turns out. And it's just great. If I could get the strip in the right direction. All right, that one next. So let me pick this apart. Pick it apart. Yeah, when you're picking this apart, you're like, oh, there's a little bit of work. That's useless. But it's okay because it really does turn out great in the end. All right, so you can see there that, maybe you can't. Okay, let me bring this over here and show, show and tell. So I just picked this apart. So this right here, this right here, this is the, the top of the quilt. And if I come the whole way down to the end of this strip, right here, there's tan. And the way that I have this quilt laid out is that I want the tan to be more in the center. So I don't want the tan to start appearing in this brown area up here. Cause you can only see up to like right here. And there's about another 15 inches of extra up there of extra brown so now what i'm going to do is switch the direction of these of the strips now here here's a, a prime example of what i mean when i say to to do your own thing i said in the beginning that the the one inch strip is the best place to switch directions but i'm going to mix it up a little bit and I'm gonna switch directions within my next strip. And my next strip would happen to be a two inch strip. So you can just switch directions 
wherever you want. It will create an awesome design and just go with the flow. There's no rhyme or reason to this quilt. It's just, just a fun time. Okay, wait a minute. Yep. I better line this up the right way instead of guess. Yep, right here. So now, oh, let me show you what I did. So I have everything laid out over here, maybe. So what I'm doing is I'm lining up that fabric over here. You can see that these two browns are right next to each other. And normally my pattern that I was doing would have me take this fabric down one. Okay, but I said I wanted to switch direction. So I'm going to move that brown fabric up one. And I'm going to line this up till I get to the top and then pick that seam apart right there. Okay. So yeah. Uh, let's see, at what point do you starch? Do you starch the jelly roll before you sew the strips? I personally starched the, the fabric before I sewed it into the tube. The reason being is when you get a jelly roll strip, half the time anyway, the strips are a little bit wonky and things like that. And if you were to starch the strips before you sew them, you're going to end up getting even more of a wave in your strips. So what I would recommend doing is sewing all of your strips together and starch that fabric before you sew your tube together. There's that one. Do do do. Okay, yep. Find that fabric up there. I think I missed it. Sure did. Right there. Go up one, and it's the seam. So, this is the the fun part of the construction of the. Uh, Bargello. You know, you get to play around with the different effects that your quilt gives. And some quilts uh, might look better in different um, avenues. So what I would recommend doing is before you cut apart your, uh, or you pick apart your jelly roll strips, I would lay them out um, in the tube and just sort of do like a preview of what your design is going to look like. And if you pick, if you pick all of your seams apart, like I'm, I'll show you. Come on. So if if you need to put your strip back together, or you don't like the way that it's laid out, just lay your pieces right sides together, where the strip comes undone, right sides together, and just sew across here, and that will close your tube again. And then you can pick apart a different a different seam. This one. Make sure I have it going in the right direction. Nope. Okay. Put this one up here. And then that's all I have room for on this design wall. Uh, let's see. Uh, were these all the colors in one jelly roll or did you add more? So. Ron Carlton, the uh, writer of the pattern, he recommended that if you would like um, your Bargello to be suitable for a queen size bed, he recommended that you added a couple of extra jelly roll strips to your jelly roll. So um, as you, you saw that 
Where even is it? Over here. So here on the jelly roll, when I looked at this, I knew that I wanted an even balance between the browns and the, the tans and the blues. So what I did was I pulled from my stash and of course had to go to the quilt shop and I found some batiks that were in this color range. So I added my extra strips in this area to make it even with the brown. But you can, oh, you can add as many strips as you want to your jelly roll to make it longer. Um, but yeah. Uh, at what point? Okay, I read that. Catch y'all in a bit. Yep. So Donna is leaving the chat to get ready for her live. And once we end here, all of you should automatically go straight over to Donna's. So, so we'll see if that works. But if not, Donna will be on her channel doing an all night sewing chat at 10 o'clock, which is in 10 minutes. So yes. Will this pattern give the 3D effect? I would say so. I know that there's books out there that only use about four or five different colors of fabric that really gives you that weave effect. But this is just your, your average jelly roll. Uh, let's see. Okay, hang on. Oh, see, I picked it apart in the wrong place. So what I'm gonna do is sew this back together. Find the end of it. Sew this back together. And then re-pick it apart. Just like that. Tucker, are you staying up sewing? Absolutely. I will be on Donna's channel after this live ends for as long as I can. <laughs> so you'll definitely be able to catch me over there at Donna's. Come on. Pick this apart like that and yeah so now you can see maybe if I can get it on the wall there we go so you can see here now down here now my wave is switching directions again so I started out going up then I switched directions at that one inch strip and I came down, 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 down. And then down here, I switched directions again. And now my strips are starting to go back up. So definitely, definitely, definitely play around with the layout of your strips and ha just have fun with it. So see you there. Going to get myself all set up. Good. I'm glad that you will be there, Quilt Tessa. So, with all of that being said, that's it, pretty much. So, if anyone has any other questions, pop them into the chat, and yeah, then we'll cut it off of here, and once this live ends, you should be automatically redirected to Donna's live technology, if it works, you know. Uh, let's see, Janine, I starch mine before I sew, but I think the idea of sewing them uh, wait, hang on. But I like the idea of sewing them after starching them after they have all been sewn together. I think that's what she's trying to say. So, so yeah. But I am really liking the separation between the brown and the tan and the white with this big blue wave. And it sort of reminds me of a beach. So, I like it. So, yeah. Um, what else? Not much. Not much. Hang on a second. Oh, okay. I'm like, there's strips over there. I'm like, did I cut extra strips? But you know me, I put things in places and I'm like, okay, I don't even remember what I put them there for. Uh, let's see. What do you do when you run out of design wall space? That is a great question. 
crawl on the floor. But uh, remember, what I'm going to do is actually, before I unpick any more um, strips, is tonight on Donna's Live, I will sew this section together. So, hang on. Garbage all over my floor. So I'm going to sew this section together. So each one of these strips, when I sew them together, will eliminate a quarter of an inch or a half of an inch in between each of these seams. So by the time I sew it, it'll probably be to like here and then I can lay more out. But if I'm working on a big quilt or something like that, I just use the floor. <laughs> yep. Nellie says, thank you, Tucker. See you at Donna's. Yes. So yeah. So with all of that being said, I'm gonna cut this off of here and I will see everyone over at Donna's channel in a couple of minutes. So uh, hang out in this live for a couple minutes. Um, and once this live ends, you'll be redirected to Donna's. Uh, we have Laura asking, how many jelly roll packs for a queen size? That's perfect. And that'll give me a couple more minutes to talk. Um, so Ron Carlton, the, the pattern designer, recommends that you use two or three, I think it's three, I'm gonna say three, err on the side of caution, three jelly roll strips to make a queen size quilt. He also recommends that you add at least eight or 10 extra jelly roll strips in, in addition to your 40 jelly roll strips. So technically 50 jelly roll strips, 50 times two, which is the finished size of a jelly roll strip is 100, which is plenty of quilt to hang over a queen size bed. So the 50 jelly roll strips will give you the length and the three jelly rolls will give you the width. So three jelly roll strips and um, a little bit extra. <laughs> uh, let's see, hey Tucker, love the colors. I have three 20 piece fat quarter bundles from greens to golds. Hmm. Wait, hang on, jelly. Twenty. Wait a minute. Twenty. Two. I'm trying to do math. Yeah, I think because you can just sew your, cut your fat quarters in two and a half inch strips and then sew those together. That would be awesome. That would make a really cool bargello. Yeah, definitely. Try it out. Very talented, well-spoken in your instruction, and, and it's extremely clear and easy to follow. Glad I found you, new fan. Well, thank you, Quilt Quilty Tube. I'm so glad you could make it, and I'm glad you like it. So, if you really want to see the Hot Mess Express and the, the craziness of Tucker as he gets slap happy throughout the night, definitely... Pop over there to Donna's, and I will see everyone in a little bit. So, with all that being said, uh, how big of a quilt would you get with one jelly roll? <clears throat> so, one jelly roll, a normal size jelly roll is uh, 40 strips, so 40 times 2 is 80. And until you cut your, your 40 inch um, piece, because when you sew your jelly rolls, it's 80 by 40 until you cut all of these well there's what hang on right here is about 40 inches and until you cut cut and sew you're probably only going to be left with about 30 inches of actual quilt top when you're finished so it'll probably be about 30 36 by 80 so maybe like a lap quilt I would say a really long lap quilt for a tall person. So yeah. So everyone's saying thank you and I will see you all over at Donna's and thank you all for joining. Make sure you check the link in the description below for the link to the pattern and the link to Donna's channel and Teresa's channel. And so yeah. So I will see everyone over at Donna's and quilt out everyone. Bye.